people welcome back all right so last time in the last video we installed the full stack generator and we ran it and we looked at the application and now what I want to do is kind of look at some of that code that was generated just to see the pattern of it, the style and sort of see what we're going to be in for when we use the sub generators to generate the same type of artifacts okay so some of the things we're going to look at definitely are the controllers there's a module a model that gets um, built in this generator don't worry about it a model is just basically a function that's going to be used to encapsulate or represent the entity that you want to store to the database so in our example we've been using user and task and what we've done so far is we just said this is a javascript regular javascript object with some properties but we can go a little bit better than that and say well we have sort of like a class to represent a task or represent a user and they will have the same set of properties so that's all it is and then we're going to look at resource um, resource is just um, an object that we're going to use to marshal our data from the front end to the back end back end to the front end and all i mean by that is it, it encapsulates the whole communication with the back end it just makes it a little bit easier so angular provides us ng resource module and we're going to use that instead of what we were doing before which is the much more lower level dollar sign http um, service which we were using so ng resource module kind of wraps that up um, and give you a nicer interface and there's documentation and you're going to see me reference the documentation during the video and um, then we will look at a data access object and a data access object is if you imagine that you have an, a class that represent the actual entity that you're going to store in the database these are the things with the properties like I said task or user your data access object is an object that sort of um, presents an interface for saving creating retrieving um, you know managing that particular um, types of that particular entity and so that might encapsulate exactly how you talk to the database and hide all that stuff. And as a matter of fact, what we're going to see is our ng resource uses our entity and also uses our ng resource. Or to DAO for our um, to do uses the entity to do and the resource so that um, it just presents you with methods for being able to save an um, entity, delete it get multiple entities that sort of thing as you could think of it like a service if well, maybe we had our task service or something but services are a little bit more big in scope they don't tend to do one entity the way we used it before to simplify things we just said we had a task service and our task service was what was giving us the save retreat create and all that sort of stuff to our back end so that's our data access object and that's about it so those are some of the things you're going to look at this video is going to be kind of long sorry about that but i kind of want to kind of review the code and i'm going to show you the different ways you write classes um we haven't really written a class before but i'm sure you how to write a class in es5 and es6 and yep i'm going to go over the code all right so let's jump in so what i want to do is make sure that my mongodb is running and then i'm going to move the application we created in the previous video into the chapter video um, directory that's so that we do more sections i don't have to keep recreating the application so let me cd into the application directory and i'm going to start it up and again remember we just type npm a run dev and then it's going to open up our browser i'm going to close the extra browser here and then just to verify that it's working by refreshing the application adding it to do and then removing it so that seems to work so that's good Start here by taking a look at our um, index.html file. It doesn't look very different than what we would have written. I mean, a lot more stuff in it, but the general thing is there's the ng view for our routes to show up, and then there's the app.routes file that defines our route. Well, let's quickly look at the definition of our Angular application or module itself. So it's got a demo app, which is what we get specified. Then there is three other modules that it depend on ng message, which we haven't really done, ng route, and ng resource. Ng resource um, basically is like I said a, a wrapper around the data sign HTTP um, service and makes things a little bit easier to talk to our backend. The ng messages uh, we'll see it provides some directives so it'll still put messages on our screen. But other than that, again, nothing too different than what we know. Well, if we really look in the to do directory, which you want to think of as a feature directory, uh, feature of the application encapsulates all the control and modules for that feature we start with a template we'll see it all it's just a form um, similar sort of thing that we know um, and you know the input and uh, this ng message directory that is provided by the 
ng message um, module um, and then we see a table that iterates over all our to do's um, again nothing too different here um, you know it's just if you look at our route you'll see it how it's using controller has so when you go back to the template um, you're gonna see to do control and again we've done that before the only two things that are really new here is um, this ng directive to render messages and you can see it looks pretty straightforward um, just like look like a case statement based on the different error message that we can get from our form and we've covered that when we talked about form to doing form validations so I want to draw your attention is towards the bottom of the form here where my mouse is moving around um, like line 56 through 60 and you'll see we have a button and it's type submit and then you look at the top of the form at line 6 you'll see the form says ng submit and so that's where the action is or the method that's going to be called on our controller when we click the submit button so the submit button itself doesn't have ng click on it instead it's just going to cause the form to be submitted and then we tell in the form that when you submit then that's what you do okay let's take a look at the controller and we see something different here with this array call so to explain it let's kind of um, let me show you something else so previously when we um, wrote our controller we would do something like you know ng um, module and look up the our module of course you have to store that in a local a variable that's why i used to do anyway but you don't have to you can just to the control at the end of that so it seems to be this it's the same thing and then we define our controller name and then the function that's going to implement our controller and of course the one way we used to do it is use dial sign scope to inject the scope and then we attach stuff to our scope right so this is all very familiar and that's how we did it most of the time now um, the other thing you can do is if you're going to use controller as is instead of using dial sign scope you can take that out and then just put this, the word this. And what this referred to is an instance of this function when it's instantiated. And so you're attaching properties to the function itself. Now, this is fine, but then if you're gonna minimize your code, then you can have a situation where um, the variables that are gonna be used can get renamed and Angular wouldn't know how to align them properly. So for example, Let's say we wanted to inject dollar sign log um, to do, uh, let's see what else they inject. Oh, the DA, was, um, um, yeah, take that out. So the DA also, the to do DA is like a service for, the, like I said, it's not really a service, but we'll see. And so I want to inter inject this. And if we minify the code, it might rename some of these variables, you know, A, B, and so on. And so something like to do's or to do might get renamed to like A and B. And if it does it all throughout the function, that's not a problem. But when it comes to injecting things, if it renamed these parameters to this function, then they may not function properly. So what you do is you, in this array that you're going to pass um, as a second parameter to the controller, is you specify as strings the parameters that you expect. And that way, the minification code can safely minify things and Angular can still inject them properly. So this is just basically a workaround. So the way you do this is you do it just like this. All the things that you expect, you put them a string here um, in this array and the function itself is also a member of that array but it comes last. And so that's all they're doing in the code um, that was generated by ng full stack. One other thing that you've probably never seen before and that is on line 10 where they assign the value of this, which refers to the current instance of this function, like I said before, to a variable called self, and then use self afterward. And this has to do with a quirk with a JavaScript language, where this may not always refer to the function or the object that you call it on. And to understand it, uh, we can't really get into it right now, but I'm going to post some links in the video. And there's this guy named Crockford who does a nice series on Java script and the language and everything like that how you do functions and inheritance and so on and i really advise you to watch it if you're really going to be playing in the javascript space so it's something you, you should really understand it's not so much problem in es6 which is you know the next version of javascript um, there you can use let and you get around some of this issue and it certainly make writing classes easier and so on one thing for us though is um, the assignment of um, this to do which is going to really up, be uh, um, controlled by or we provide and get information for 
that input field, and that's from the to-do model, which we will cover. I mentioned that this is like a class. So you can say new to-do class, and you can assign properties to it, and we're going to assign it to this self that to do which is the controller, which get reference on the form as to-do message, and then arrays of to-do. Uh, the create function here is just a function that's assigned to, again, the, the controller, and it calls the to-do DAO, data access object, which is the thing that controls access to this entity type, the to-dos, and it uses promises, and we talk a little bit about promises. We've seen them before where you call a function, you get a promises back, and then you can do like then when it's successful or error function, or here they call it catch function. So that's a more standard way of doing promises. We call it catch function. Um, we were using promises on basically the dollar sign HTTP object, but we're going to see that though here the to do um, DAO return a resource, and then we, um, you know, so when you call that, it always returns a promise. So we're always just going to use then and catch. And this is going to be the case for, you know, the create and the delete. And basically, um, it's pretty straightforward there. Uh, there's a get all function that's going to be called by the delete. When you delete something, just um, call get all. Or um, when we first come through load this controller, we want to get all the to dos that are stored in the database. So, again, nothing new there. Okay, so let's take a look at <clears throat> this class that I said um, implements the model, so our to do model class. And again, this is going to be typical, like if we want to create a task or a user or a person or a hotel, something along that line. So, you create a class to encapsulate all the properties. And so, it's pretty simple. You can see in line six, we do is assign to a variable a function. And in seven and eight, um, well, seven really, we assign the properties for that we want this class to have. And eight is just basically us extending our class with any, all the properties that was passed in to our function uh, when it's called with a to do, um, lowercase to do on line six there. So we just use an ng extend to extend our object this with all that stuff. So we can see this is being used here in our controller. And so let's go back to our model. And <clears throat> it's just a function. Um, as I sh will show you, a class in ES6 and ES5, um, the difference between the two. And again, we didn't cover classes before, but let's take a look and see how you implement the class. But before we do, let's just look at some of the other things that's defined here. Um, line 11, we just have a variable to represent, because uh, we don't really have constant in ES5, but we have a variable to represent a minimum length. And then we have a function that we're going to attach to our class. And notice that we use the variable name here, to do, and then we said that prototype, and then that is valid, and it's just a function that's going to be, when you call it, it's going to check to see if it's a string and, you know, all these different things that we're going to check for. And then we return it, just like we would do for a service. Um, so let's take a look at how you define a class in ES6 first, and then we'll do it in ES5. We want to do it in ES6 first is because we have the class keyword in ES6. And so it makes it a little bit easier to see what it would be done like today, and then kind of go backwards. So let's say I have this class called person, and then I want to, to say like new person, I'm going to pass it a name, and then I want to say p that print, so print some information or whatever I want to on this object, right? So, of course, um, we're going to want to be able to accept the name. So, in ES6, you have this constructor method that you can define, and um, it's going to take a name. And then now to assign the name to this instance, we're going to say the same thing, this, that name equals name. And so, that takes care of it. But my print method that I want, um, I can also put this inside of this class. And so, I'm going to just say print. And notice I don't have to say like function or anything. It's just you know, just write it like this. And I'll say like log, you know, hello, and the name of the person. And so that works fine. And we can actually run this and test it. But before I do, I need to put something up here, um, which is use strict. So let me just put, put type that in. And then I'm going to run it. Ah, uh, I need the semicolon to be outside, not inside the string. And as you can see, I was able to run it and it works. Um, I invokes the method and I'm um, it. 
So this is how you implement it in ES6, which you can write a node and it will work fine. Um, and ES5 you can use for the browser. Um, so many browsers might still um, not support ES6 yet, so hence why you probably don't want to, you want to stay away from writing ES6 code for the browser, you know, Angular. But let's just go through this example. So now, like I said, when you implement a class in ES5, you use a function. And this is how you do it instead. Notice how the function name is where you pass in that parameter. Um, you don't have the constructor method that you add. Um, so we use the parameter there to the function on line three, and then we assign it just like as we did in the constructor for ES6, we do that on um, line four. Now we're adding properties to a function. So the other properties you can add is, um, you know, just a, fun a method, a uh, function call, right? So I have the print right here, and um, you're gonna see it's gonna work the same way as if, um, you know, as the um, person one class that we use, we define in CS6. And so I'm gonna run and see it works fine. But the more, um, what should I say, um, idiomatic way, um, of you might see this written in ES5 is actually the function is not in function within function, but rather as a property like that, is rather like I said, you put it on the prototype. And there's a reason for this, but basically it would still work. So here you just use the name of the function, and here it's at that prototype. And again, what I, remember what I said, if you invoke a lookup a property on an object in JavaScript and it's not there, then it's going to navigate to the prototype and look at the prototype object, whatever that's pointing to. So here, whatever the prototype object happens to be, we're adding a, a property on that prototype object. So prototype must be a valid object and we're adding a property to that. Uh, in JavaScript, if you actually have, a, when you create a new function, if it doesn't have a prototype defined for it, Java itself you know, gives it a simple prototype so you can have basic operation on it. I think it's the object, object prototype or whatever. That's, that doesn't matter. Um, so you can see it still works. So now we can go back and now look and see that they've done the same thing. The only difference here is they have assigned that function to a variable, whereas we have done create actual function. So, but we can do the same thing here. I mean, um, just a matter of anonymous function to a variable. But the effect is the same and it still works as you can see below. And I'm gonna do that again to show you that it works. So that's what I did here on line six. They created a function and basically a class and they augmented through the proper prototype with a is valid method. And that's gonna allow us to know, say that oh, we have this class called to do and of course, we are gonna be able to create instances of to-do. Pay attention though, is that we create a factory here. And what this means is that every time you inject a to-do, you get a new to-do, that's what factories do, they create things. Whereas with a service, it's more like a singleton, which is you just have one for your entire application. So keep that in mind when we think about factory and service versus service. Now we've looked at the to-do model and we see that being injected here in our controller. The other thing we see injected is that to do DAO service, which I told you is a data access object. If we look at it, we'll see that it's injecting um, DALSENQ, which is Angular's promise library. Um, this Q library allow you to, or service, allow you to create promises. And we talked about promises already. Promises, and we've seen them before when we use DALSENQ, HTTP, we would go off, do something, asynchronously and then we get called by the then function you know we provide a success and a callback so um, we, we, when we use HTTP get for example we would pass these either a then function like this or an error function or we can pass both function the success and error function as additional parameters to the get method so we've done both ways um, the more idiomatic way to use promises is to use the then function call. So um, instead of passing two functions like this, it's kind of a little harder to read. So, um, but that's what the DAS and Q service allows you to do is create promises. So as we saw in our controller, each call to our to do DAO, DAO um, returns a pro return the promise and then we call then on it. And so uh, we're gonna use that now. Oh, and we also started to use catch. So catch is another way of um, handling errors. The advantage of catch is that you can chain a number of promises together. 
So at the end, you can just call catch, and if any one of those um, promises fail, then the one catcher is going to be called instead of you know you nesting, um, then an error and then an error. Okay, so let's continue. So um, if you want to read up more on the dollar sign to do um, dollar sign service, just check out um, Angular's documentation here. Um, it shows you some example of how you can create promises and use use them. Um, so uh, again, uh, something we've done before. So. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Um, you see the, the usage of it. We've done it also for Mongoose in um, the server side. So we, we talked about to-do already. So now we just need to talk about to-do resource. And when we look here, we see it all. These three things are getting injected. And the resource is that encapsulation of sending the RESTful request to the back end. So that comes from the ng resource module. It gives us um, a resource which we're going to create here and again as a factory. Remember, a factory says everything you injected, give me a new instance. So, what does this resource really gives us? Well, for our function, it gets injected with a resource object, a resource, the resource service, and we can go look that up, which comes from the ng resource module. But once we have that module dependent, we can get a resource, and we can go look it up and check out the documentation for this. But it makes it very easy to create resources. And so we're going to create a resource for every entity that we, we deal with, which is we're going to wrap up how to persist that entity, or I said before, marshal that entity um, to the database and from the data, or to the back end and from the back end. And so we, we, all we have to do is specify the URL, where the endpoint where that resource can, you can get a resource. Any additional parameters, how to bind to you know, those path variables, parameters, and um, any methods, any um, new methods we want to define or any changes to the methods that it provides. So if we go look at the uh, documentation here, um, oops, uh, let's just do angular dollar sign resource. Um, you'll see that it provides a number of methods already, like, you know, get, um, put, uh, delete, all that stuff already. And so um, it already makes some guess about what these methods should do um, when you do a get or post and so on. So only if you want to change it really, then you can specify that in the methods um, object there. But other than that, creating a resource is just simple. You call it like a function, you get back a resource, which is going to be a resource for this to do endpoint. And now we return that. So of course, when we inject that into our controller, we have an instance of this resource that we can use to talk to the backend. So does that make sense? Um, so pretty easy. And so our to-do DAO, DAO you know, data access object, is really just using our to-do model and this resource and saying, OK, this is the model I need to proxy to the back end. I'm going to use this to do um, this resource to do the work for this particular, to this particular endpoint for this model. And so it's just wrapping it up nicely. And, giving us a way to nicely encapsulate. And here again, we come back to how you write a class in um, JavaScript ES5, and you know, just function, anonymous function assigned to a variable or just a function name. Then we assign to that object the prototypes we want to call from our controller, such as delete or create. And then we essentially, in terms of get all, we have a success function defined um, just assign to a variable, and if we call this, 